Okay guys, I'm gonna go live here in a second. I had a little bit of a delay trying to find my password. Let me turn this around and entertain you guys for a minute. Yeah, there we go. Let me adjust the cameras a bit. So this evening, welcome, but we're going to talk about air conditioning units on fenders. Um, I should have pull, pulled them all out of the garage, what do you think? I left a, a number of them in. This one, I, you can tell I've been on the trails a little bit. Who says I don't use a Defender the way it should be used? I don't know if it should be used, but... So, question. First question is, do we do them in Raptor paint? Yes, actually, we're doing one in the Keswick Raptor really soon. And then, oh, it's going to be Keswick and Black Raptor, actually. and walk you around uh, you know it's it's my Wednesday night live just so you guys know I used to do it so anyway I used to do this on Sunday night but now we're doing it on Wednesday night and uh, the topic I didn't I haven't done a good job of promoting ever since I've been in the country meaning the mountains I haven't done a really good job of promoting I've been busy keeping up with with the builds that's really what it is so i apologize for that but uh before we get into the air conditioning units let me tell you well let me remind you that we do have some tickets left i keep on adding tickets to our rovers in the woods which is june 18th yeah june 18th through the 20th here in sharon springs new york so uh, we're going to be doing some camping not to make you guys dizzy Share the backyard with you. So this is the backyard. Um, as soon as I can find the button again. All right, there we go. And there we go. So that's the backyard. So our property runs to the trees back there. Those woods are ours. And then it continues over there. But then it goes up the other side too. So the reason that I show you that directly ahead past this fence. We go well past the fence, like I said, back to the trees. But down there is the sporting clay course. And then um, over there is a long range, uh, a long, long range rifle and pistol range. And then we have the axe throwing. What we're going to be camping is uh, what we'll be doing, unless you want to stay in a hotel. So there's that. All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about defenders. Um, someone just asked, are they restored or are they new? These are restored. These are classic. These are the real, and I don't mean rudeness to when I say the real Land Rover Defender, but these are British built Land Rover Defenders. Uh, the new Defenders are not British built. They're built in, I believe, Slovakia or something like that. So some country that's far away from England. Completely restored. Uh, this is a 19... This is... Let's start with this one. This one is a 1995. This is a 1995. This is a 1996. And this is a 1995. So I took this one on the trip recently. And uh, boy, I tell you what, the roads were dusty. So I, I made a mess. I mean, everything's got to get cleaned up. Um, I'll have to finish the cabinet here, meaning that I'll cover the back of it. And here's the, the gull wing. We're going to talk about air conditioners, just so you guys know. Okay, it's coming. 
but uh, the gull wing got rid of the windows and did this. So, uh, does anybody know what this is? You guys got any idea what this is? All right, I'm waiting for you guys to tell me. All right, well, nobody's answering. So anyway, when you're out hunting or outdoor, I mean, everyone needs coffee and tea, right? So that's what this is for. So there you go. Bit one on both sides, extra storage. case, my shotgun shells, my vest, just stuff. All right, so there you go. Yeah, you're right, coffee maker. And uh, so this is Elizabeth. Needs to be cleaned up. But we did about, uh, about a thousand miles or so. All right, so let's talk about air conditioning, guys. So I'm going to explain the difference to you. This is a standard air conditioning unit on Hayrod. So if you look, and I know it's dirty, but hey, it's fine. If you look under the dash here, so this unit here is the air conditioning unit. This is the way, so air conditioning was an afterthought when it came to the Defenders. Um, keep in mind, these trucks were built as farm trucks. That's what that's what Land Rover built them for, is a farm truck, for a farmer to use it and use how, you know, to move sheep, move cows, whatever they needed to do. And if you're in uh, England, it doesn't get that hot. So uh, air conditioning is really not an important factor when it comes to that. So they started doing these units, Land Rover that is, later on. And... Uh, so it's called an underslung unit. So it attaches, so the air just comes out of this. There's no heat in this box. It's only air conditioning is all it is, okay? So since this is your air conditioning unit, and then up here, these are the controls for your heater, your defrost. This has nothing to do with your air conditioning. This is your fan over here. So this right here is the fan speed for the heat. Again, has nothing to do with your air conditioning. Your heat and your defrost comes out of the vents on the top here, on these two vents. So that's, that's your heat. So air conditioning in these trucks before that vent is really these flaps. These flaps pop up and it's just outside air coming through. So that was your air conditioning. So later on, Land Rover started offering these units, these underslung units. And again, all this blows is cold air. So fan speed here. And this is your how cold do you want it? All the way up, all the way cold, all the way up. Fan is full speed. So that's what that is, okay? So underslung unit, it works well. Um, I've sold a number of these trucks to... People in really hot climates, I mean, whether it's, you know, California, Palm Springs, uh, Las Vegas, Texas, and it, it does a good job. It, it's fine. Um, it's got the four vents. The, the airstream is not that, that strong, but it's strong enough. It's pointed up. Keep in mind, air rises. I mean, cold air, let me rephrase that. Cold air is being sent up this way and cold air drops heat rises so your heat blowing up here on the windscreen this one's got a heated windscreen too air conditioning blowing up and then it drops so again the air conditioning unit underslung unit works well it is a modern design it uses the modern freon it has a compressor it, it has all of that so it's an okay unit it's, it's fine. It's, but with, and I hate saying this right now where everybody says, oh, COVID, COVID. Um, there's a lot of parts that we can't get. And this was 
air conditioning units were definitely on our list to say, how do we improve this? And I mean, there's a number of parts on a Helderberg Defender that we create, that we manufacture, that is made in, a, made in the shop. I mean, or they're made in the shop. I mean, like the hinges, these hinges are custom made. So you'll see a number of things on a Helderberg that's custom made. The steering wheel boss and the steering wheel is all custom made. It's all handmade. The cubby box is handmade. Uh, the seats are hand done. So you get my point. Everything is done by hand. So we had it on our list of saying we want to create our own air conditioning units. So I'm going to show you Emma. Emma is our Portofino Red and D110. So this just arrived completed. And before I get into the air conditioning unit, let me just walk around. Let me let you, let me just be quiet and let me, I'm going to let you look at it, okay? I'm just going to let you take it all in. I feel like I should be playing some music for you guys. Custom hinges, custom hinges on the bonnet. Hood is a bonnet. Custom hinges on the windscreen. Windshield is a windscreen. These are called wings. These are not fenders. They're wings. But a lot of custom parts. So we moved up our production date because we're just picking things up that we want to create, that we want to build. And air conditioning is one of them. Let me let you go ahead and look at the interior. We've got a bunch of speakers in the floor, so. Notice the seat belts. I did those in red. So it's a charcoal interior, black sand interior. And red stitching. We minimize the red stitching instead of doing red on all of it, making it too busy. We just limited the red. So we just did it as an accent. We didn't put any seats in the rear. This one's, uh, we're completing the audio on it. So we'll have the Apple, Apple CarPlay, Android Play, Spotify, Bluetooth, hands-free calling. GPS navigation. We have to finish the doors. So we'll put the leather on the doors that will match the seats. Okay. Momo steering wheel with the red accent. All right. Do you notice something different here? You notice that there's no underslung unit. There's nothing on the bottom. nice clean and that's the thing the underslung unit where it sticks down fairly far it does take up some leg room and it's not the most efficient to cool i mean it's okay it works fine but we knew there was a better way to do it so if you look here you'll see the switches this one has a light bar i don't know if you've seen the light bar on it but this one right here is the AC switch. So we changed it. You notice there's no fan over here. And again, there's no underslung unit. And then here's the fan speed right here. So what we did is we complete, completely changed, we built we modify or we built our own air conditioning and heating unit 
So what happens now, let me see, make sure that my camera is all clean. There we go. <clears throat> but you can see the vents here. So we used vents on either side. So the vent is up here close to your face. And then we have vents up here, just like on the other, on Hayrod. And then we have a vent down there. That's our air conditioning unit now and our heating unit. So we've combined the two because before with the heating on Hayrod, the heating was just heat. And when you just do heat on your windscreen, it does not do a good job of defrost. When you combine your air conditioning and your heating for a defrost, like a modern car, that's where it's much more efficient. So the unit is quieter. It doesn't take it, it doesn't drag the engine down. I mean, that one has a little bit of drag on the engine. Again, it's completely fine, but we just knew we could do it better. And that's what we did. So air conditioning vents here, they blow up high, they get into the back. Air conditioning vents up here, again, blowing high, making the air come up across the windscreen, across the roof, and then into the back. So let's just kind of... All right, air's on. So I'm gonna turn it on high. And it just works so much better. So that's the air conditioning units. Completely changed everything, it's much more efficient. So let me do this now. All right, so there you go, guys. Air conditioning, that's what I love about the fenders. There's so many things that you can do to it if you're, if you're what? If you like to work on things, if you, if you like to create things, it's like, it's just a canvas to create all kinds of uh, parts and modifications and, you know, to create the colors that you want and do all types of combinations. It's just... It's fabulous. So there you go. Um, boy, I'm really blown out at this one. There we go. Anyway, so any questions? Any question about air conditioning and heating of a Land Rover Defender? I get that a lot of times. People say, well, does it have air? And I'm, yeah, it has air. Um, I'll tell you, the unit that's on Hayrod, if you want to add air conditioning to your Defender, it's approximately a $4,000 option. So you can go to Rovers North, you can buy that type of an air conditioning unit for right around $4,000, and then you have to get someone to install it. It's not a hard installation, it's just time consuming, but it's not hard. Um, heat, all the Defenders have heat. Um, it's just whether or not how well they work. And you can change the the heat output in one of these by changing the heater matrix and a thermostat. So I hope I answered all the questions when it comes to um, air conditioning and heating and, and all that. But I just wanted to show you because I do get that a lot that does it have air? And the answer is yeah, it definitely has air. Um, and it's just how do you want to create the air? So. I'm really proud of this system. This one does have uh, power windows, central door locks. Um, the Apple CarPlay will go in right here into this section. The backup camera will go on the back. So, so there you go. Again, the door panels are not done. We have to get the leather installed on that and get this thing cleaned up. All right, so... Uh, I know some of you go, hey, I'd like to hear what it sounds like. So there you go. That's what it sounds like. All right. Question for you guys. Which grill do you prefer? 
this one. Or this one. five vents on the system. I'm sorry, six. There's six vents on the system. There's one up here, one over there, one here. The sun's really killing it. One on the other side. There's one down there. And then there's one right there. My favorite engine is either the uh, the 300 TDI or the TD5. The TD5 is not legal in the U.S. yet, but uh, I, I like the 300 TDI. So Malcolm likes the grill on the left. Raven likes the grill on the left. Michael likes the grill on the left. Yeah, I like this grill a lot too. This one is uh, made in Germany. It's handmade in Germany. It's metal. These are all metal too. So, made one at a time. And then this one is just KBX. Nothing. It's just plastic. All right, so the question is, how insulated are they? Do they work, uh, do they do well to retain the heat and the cold air? They're very insulated. So we do a spray insulation, because um, we strip everything down. So everything comes down to, the, you know, we drill all the rivets, as you can see. You know, everything's repainted, drilled. But uh, we do an insulation spray coat, and then we cover it with uh, three layers of butyl rubber that actually has a uh, like a silver backing and then we cover it with a layer of foam and that's a big thing when you actually compare a Heldeberg to one of the other builds you'll you can tell a difference in the way the doors shut the way the doors sound you don't hear that tinny sound because uh, we we do a lot to actually do the sound deadening so hear how solid it is so the doors are all done inside the door cards are done insulation the battery boxes so there's a lot of insulation in them. and then our headliners are everything's done the roof is all insulated and then our headliners are in Alcantara suede and then the carpet's a very thick carpet all right so it looks like everybody likes the left so got any questions about the air conditioning and heat just ask this one is dirty I'm gonna back it up so we can take a look at this grill Each one of these has a different personality. Like the sound of the So 
anyway, what I was saying, it just doesn't look good on a D90 and it's barely passable on a D110 because it's so big. I mean, it's, it's beefy. It sticks out so far that you really need a big truck. And that's the design. And what I mean, the design, when you're doing the design, it's important because I know you guys have seen Defenders and you're just like, wow, that just looks awkward. It just looks like it's a Franken truck. And it's just being able to see the design all the way through that you just don't start adding parts because you like them. All the parts need to go together. So like this one, the grill goes well with the, with the bonnet, the hood, but it also goes well with the arches too. I don't care for the body kits. I just feel like it takes the original design away. Um, I refuse to install a body kit on a, one of our builds because it's just not, I just, it, it just takes away from the design. So, so anyway, there's that grill. Oh, hey, Matt's here. Hi, Matt. Uh, that grill. Notice this one too. Notice how it sticks out farther. And uh, so this is the unit that we do by design. Um, you'll notice no holes because we fill everything in. So this is a fabrication that we do. But the reason that for this grill is so we can have a bigger intercooler and we can have the air conditioning unit in there. So this truck has a ton of performance. I built this truck as a, what I call a bulldog. You can drift it through the corners. It has so much power. And it's because of having a bigger intercooler in it. You can see the size of this intercooler is just massive. And I wouldn't be able to put that type of intercooler in the truck. All right, question is why no rear flares on Enzo? That's because it's a D130. D130s did not have rear flares. So to keep with the true design, no flares. And it also keeps a cleaner look, too. I've seen people put the flares on them, and that's another thing. I just, I don't like the way it looks, and it goes away from the original design. So, I also don't do any mud flaps. I like the clean look without the mud flaps. eyeballing this one. I'm going slow on it. You know, I think so. I think we can, because if you look at it, how much it sticks out here, I mean, it's about, and uh, not that I have big fingers either. It's about that joint. Um, it's going to be close because of this bracket here. Mm, I don't know now that I'm looking at it. Yeah, because this piece here, the nudge bar, actually comes down a little lower than the grill. So... Yeah, I don't know. It, it would be a close fit. I think we would just have to try to set it up and see if it would fit. Yes, the red one is plastic. So this is just a plastic grill. Plastic mesh. It's a KBX is what it is. The company's called KBX. These are mass produced. They're just... Uh, this is what it is. I mean, they look fine. But, you know, they come pre-painted. Um, these, we can do black. We can do whatever color. So, there you go. I don't know, Van. I got to try to do some measurements because 
if you notice here that this piece comes out this is because we removed that entire center piece but see how this comes out past how far past the bonnet but it's where it's kind of high so that actually this piece gets removed here all this piece and we replace this piece with the air con unit so i'm just looking at it how it comes out so i think we'll just have to i think it'll be close it'll be a close fit it might be a little tight You could always go with a different bumper. Uh, Terra Firm makes a nice looking bumper that actually has a steel bull bar. Meaning, so a bull bar, this is right here. Um, so answer to your question, Matt. I do have an idea. There's a black, we could do a black metal one. That, um, I'll send you something. I got an idea. I'll send you something. It wouldn't be quite like this. It'd be more of the vintage one on the green one, on the green uh, D90 that I just posted the videos of today, but would, that would be in black. So there you go. All right, guys. Any questions, thoughts? What do you guys think about the red and black? Do you like that? It's different. It feels very British to me. I said portofino red and then this is an interesting color this is a havana gray pearl right now it looks blue to me but then when the sun hits it and depending on the angle it changes colors it becomes a bronzy color it's it's dirty i know it is we just had a pretty crazy rainstorm so all right, guys, June 18th through the 20th, we're having our event, and uh, I hope you can make it. Go to the website, get your tickets. Have to get a ticket. The reason you have to get a ticket is so I know how many people are showing up, so we can make sure we're ready for you. But you can stay in a hotel, or you can camp, whatever you'd like to do. All right, with that, I'm going to go spend time with my bride. If you have any questions, if I can help you in any way, just send me a message. You know where to get me. I'm easy to track down. All right. With that, have a wonderful Wednesday night. Thanks for hanging out with me, too. And uh, I know I should have brought the other ones. And then, uh, meaning I should have brought the, some more defenders out. All right. Another question. Are the tires on the red one larger than hay rods? The answer is... These are a 265-75-16. These are a 265-65-18. So there you go. So the answer is no. They're about the same size. That's an 18-inch wheel, and that's a 16-inch wheel. So to just give you a quick tire breakdown real quick, whenever you do the 16-inch wheel, you'll see that the sidewall is taller, is what it is. So this is taller than this one, because this wheel is only 16 inches, is what it is. This wheel is 18 inches, so sidewall is shorter. So this one handles supposedly better because it has less rubber is what it is, meaning that less give. So you're seeing more wheel than you are tire. Wish I could really let you guys see the Heldeberg brakes. Can you see those in there tucked away? So there's the Heldeberg brakes. And... Uh, Let's try to get it from the other side. These are, uh, you can't really see it from the other side. I don't know what I was thinking. So anyway, I'm really proud of our brake unit. 
these are our units. These are not a Brembo that's been uh, rebranded or anything like that. They are solid aluminum with the Helderberg logo put into them. And boy, do they stop. You talk about a sudden stop. That's what it does. So you can just see the size of them versus my standard brakes. Big difference. Front is the ones that are the bigger ones because that's where a lot of the stopping power is at. These are the size of what you would expect to see on a Ferrari. See how huge they are versus these. But these are completely fine, just so you know. These are good. These are good. These are better. All right, so there you go. I hope, uh, are you guys done? Can I go ahead and end the broadcast now? Or would you like to see some more defenders? I have more in the garage. The reason I have more in the garage, we can't get the audio units from. I cannot get the Apple CarPlay. I can't get amplifiers. I can't get speakers. People, go back to work, please. You're gonna have me. You're gonna give me a nervous breakdown and a heart attack all combined. So, oh, just go back to work. Let's stop playing around. Go back to work. But anyway, that's why I have so many in the garage. It's stressing me. So I know, Matt. I broke your heart. <laughs> Breaks my heart. But I don't want to lead anybody on until the last minute and say oh, I'd rather surprise you and go, Yeah, hey, here it comes. Hey, John, I'm going to call you in just a minute, by the way. All right, guys, that's it, really. I'm signing off. I'm going to go talk to my buddy, John. I'm going to go talk about doing the Northeast Backcountry Discovery Route, all 1,400 miles. So anyway, all right, guys, say goodbye. Goodbye. Right. Thanks. Talk to you.